So one of the cool parts of this particular application, at least what I think is cool about it, um, is this is a full stack Android app. So what does that mean? Right? We're all new to this. Let's talk a little bit about how apps typically work. So apps that you might have on, on your actual phone, right? If you think about your, your mail application, if you think about a web browser, if you think about a music player, um, all the data that they need to work is not stored on your device. So for example, think about a mail app, an email app. It's communicating, maybe you don't know this, but there's a server somewhere, like if you use Gmail, like I do. Gmail has servers all over the world. That's a computer in some building somewhere that's connected to the internet that when you use the Gmail app, your app is communicating with that server. So when you send a message, what it does is it talks to that server and says, you know, this user wants to send a message to this other user and a bunch of things start to happen at that point. Um, so typically when you build an app, you have two parts that you're, you're thinking about. There's the part that runs on the phone. That's the sometimes known as the client or the, the user facing app. And then there's the server code. There's code that runs on a server somewhere on some machine on the internet in some data center or whatever. What we've done on this particular app to give you a really unique experience is we've actually co-located both the client and the server in one place. So over the course of the next few checkpoints, you're not only gonna be writing the client, which is what we had students do in the past, but you're also actually gonna be writing the server as well. And so we're giving you this experience. This is something known as full stack. So the two parts of the stack, the client and the server, bring them together, you now have full stack development. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you some of the code that we've given you to start in for both the client and the server. So this code is in the network directory. I'm gonna go over here. Again, I'm in the project view. So in the network, there's both a client and a server, and we're gonna go through both. One thing I wanna point out about this walkthrough and some of the ones, other walkthroughs that follow uh, in, this particular, little bit, in this particular part of the MP, we've given you a fair amount of code, not a huge amount, but a certain amount of code. And to some degree, what we expect you to do on this checkpoint, and even on future checkpoints, is sort of mimic the code that we've given you. We're not expecting you to write things from scratch, particularly given that a lot of this is new and unfamiliar. What we're expecting you to do is kind of read the code that we gave you, understand enough of it so that you can modify it slightly to accomplish a different purpose. Now you might wonder like, why would I ask you to do something like this? You know, And the reason is that's how real programming works. When you go to work at a software development company, even when you start building your own app, if you're doing something from scratch to change the world, you're very quickly working with somebody else's code or existing code. Sometimes it's your existing code. Sometimes it's code that a coworker wrote or somebody yeah, already wrote before you joined the company or whatever. So a lot of times there's code that you need to modify. And learning how to do that effectively makes you a very, very effective software engineer. So don't think that you, know, you as a computer scientist, you always have to start from scratch. In fact, that's very unusual. It's much more normal to start working in a project where other people have already been working over time and having to read the code, understand a little bit of it and figure out ways to improve it and modify. It. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna walk you through some of the existing code to give you some sense of what some of the patterns are that you might wanna use in the future. Okay, so let's start with the client. Um, and eventually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick some logging in here that's gonna allow us to, to see what happens when we actually run the app. But for now, I just wanna talk you through the code. Okay, so the client is what makes requests. This was what normally would run on the phone. And the data here that the client is retrieving from the server is a list of courses that it's gonna be displayed in the view. So when the app starts up, the app that we gave you, what it does is it asks the server, tell me about all the courses that I should display on the screen right now. It makes a request. The server sends back some data and the client uses that data to render the UI. This is so common. Every time you open an, an email message, for example, on your phone, what's happening is that the phone is asking the server, send me the contents of the message, and then it displays the message to you. So this is a very, very common pattern that's used on many, many different types of, app, of smartphone apps. Okay, so let's look at the code that's actually here to, to, to do this. And I wanna focus on this one method that's called get summary. This method is called when the app starts up, 
And its job is to retrieve the list of summaries for all the courses that the server knows about. And what we've done to make things a little nicer is that we're only going to show you CS courses. There's actually a much longer list that you can get from the university. Um, the university actually has a server that they maintain that will actually provide this information. Uh, it's in XML, which is not what we wanted to use. But anyway, we're, we're, we'll, we'll get there. Um, so how does this actually work? So what we're going to do is we're talking about the format of the request and, and how that request gets made. And then the, uh, we'll look at the server code and the client code. And then when we're done, we'll run the app and we'll see kind of how things are happening. Okay. So the first thing that I need to do is I need to formulate my request. This is what's sometimes known as a web request. Um, and the, and uh, the reason is the way that I format request is I essentially use what would look very familiar to you as a URL. So I actually uh, formulate a URL and that's what I, that's how I ask the server. I essentially uh, use what's called an HTTP get request. And we'll talk about that in some of our lessons. You get a little more sense about that works, how that protocol works, but that's how I ask the server for this information. And so what I'm going to do right here in the code is I'm going to take the URL of the server. And this is something that, you know, looks a lot like a web URL to you. I append summary, the year, a slash and the semester. And so here's what I'll do. I'll put, uh, I'll import my Android logger and I'll say log dot, um, information, uh, request. And I'll say, um, let's see, I'll say client and I'll say, well, you know, I'll, I'll call this network example so that we can look at all the tags together in a minute. Um, and I'll say, uh, requesting summaries, uh, from, and then I'll use the URL. Uh, this is a string. Okay, the next thing that happens here is that I'm using a Android networking library called Volley. And this is how I formulate a request to the server that's gonna result in a string being returned. Okay, so I create a string request. This is a get uh, request type. This is the URL I wanna use. And then this is code that's going to run when the uh, request completes. And this is using a pattern called callbacks. We have a whole separate walkthrough on callbacks that you're gonna watch in a minute. Uh, you may wanna watch that first if you're a little confused how this works. But the idea is that uh, this provides a way for uh, me to do something without waiting for the response. But then when the server actually sends me back data, I want a way to notify uh, the code that requested the information that the data is available. Um, and so what I do is I use this series of callbacks up here that we've defined as part of this application. Uh, one of them is called summary response. And what it passes back in response to a request for summaries is the year and semester that we requested the summaries for, and then the list of these summary objects, right? So we talked about the summary object previously. This includes information about the course, semester, number, name, and title, uh, just enough to render the UI of my app, okay? Uh, so I make the request. When the request completes, the code inside oh, here is run. And what am I doing? So what I get back from this server is actually a string and I'm going to deserialize it. So we've just talked about serialization. I'm deserializing it using Jackson. So this is all sort of coming together into a, an array of summary objects. And then I call this callback method. And that's actually how the data gets back to the code that requested. Okay. Um, and once I have the request, I actually need to queue it up. So this is actually what causes it to be run. So I formulate the request here, um, and then I add it to my request queue, which causes the volley library to begin processing the request. So behind the scenes, it's gonna make the request to the server. When the server responds, it'll use the callback that I provided to return the data. Okay, so I've got my little network tag here. Let me actually try running this. Uh, let's just run the app for a minute this will work or not um, is just show you a little bit about let's see here um, uh, local post is it 8989 oh nope yeah here we go uh, and it does not it does not like that yeah I don't think I can actually uh, get to this yeah okay never mind I thought I would try it. I thought I would be able to, to show you what the request actually looked like using the web browser, because if I could connect to the, to the server on the phone, I actually could do this, but, but this is, doesn't work. Um, okay, so now let's look at the server. So my server code is over here. 
And again, normally this server code would be part of another project and it'd be part of another program that would run on another computer. The fact that we brought them to the, the two of them side by side is to give you the chance to do this, right? This is a very unusual thing to be able to do um, in this type of application. It's not only write the client, but write the server. Um, so the server, uh, you know, the idea is that the server is going to, well, hold on. Maybe this whole localhost thing will, will actually work. Uh, let's see here. It's starting up, okay. So let me try that, let me try that again. Um, I don't think this is going to work, is it? Nope, okay. I'll, I'll give up this time. Um, here's our server code. Um, and again, you're going to have to understand a little bit about how this code works. And we're going to walk you through the parts that you particularly need to know, including right now. Okay, so every request that's made to the web server. So essentially, the client formulates the request, makes the request. So now there's code in the server that starts to run. And the way all the requests come here first, so this is sometimes known as a, it's called dispatch. And it's known as a dispatch method. So its job is to take the request and figure out what to do with it. And how do we figure out what to do with it? We use the path. And this is very common. So when you load a particular URL from a web server, it takes that URL that you went to and it looks at the different parts of it and it figures out how to respond. And so let's go back to our client. So you'll notice that when we requested the summaries, we took the server URL, which ends with the slash, and we appended summary, and then the year and the semester. So what does the server do? When the server gets a request where the path starts with slash summary slash, it knows that that's a request for summaries for some year and semester. It doesn't know what year and semester yet, um, but it calls this get summary method. Uh, the get summary method, if you come up here and you can go through some of this code and, and some of this will actually uh, is stuff that you should be able to understand. Um, the get summary method takes the path and further processes it. And it's looking for two things. It's looking for that year and the semester. When, um, if the year and the semester are um, there and they're valid, it returns, and if it has information about that year and semester, it returns that information to the client. Now you might be wondering like, where is this information coming from? Uh, it's actually loading files that we gave you that contain it. And so here's an example. So uh, we've given you information about the spring 2021 courses in the CS department only. So if I open spring 2021, uh, 2021 spring summary.json, you'll see that the year semester department number and title are all in here in JSON format. Now let's go over to, um, are, and we were talking, we were just talking about JSON, right? So again, this is all building on stuff that you, you know now, right? Um, let's go over here to our, um, to our model, and you'll also see that there's a map, mapping between the fields on my summary model, semester, department, number, title, and the information in this JSON, right? And this is only about courses in the CS department. And we did this for two reasons. One reason is the list for the entire university is quite long. And the other reason is why would you want to take a course that's not in the CS department, right? So, so anyway, so this is the data that you'll be working with. There's also another file here called 2021spring.json, and this has even more information about each course, including you can things, see things like the, the, the course description, the number of credit hours, information about the section, blah, 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 blah right? So this, this is like all the information. And if you start looking at this, you might feel like this is sort of familiar. And the reason is this is the same information that's used by Course Explorer, right, which you use to, to, to you know, browse the catalog. So it's the same information that it renders. It, now, it puts it in a nice format that's a little easier to read, uh, but this is the raw data that's powering everything. Okay, so the server grabs this, sends it back to the client, and then the client calls this callback method. Now, one question is like, wait, hold on, but who's using the client? Aha, glad you asked, the main activity. So let's go all the way to the top. When the main activity starts up, it calls this get summary method. And what it does is it tells the get summary method that the callback, the, the code that implements the callback is this object. Uh, and so the callback that's called is down here, the summary response. Um, so let's put some additional logging in here. What, what was the name of the network example? Okay, so I'll do log.i network example um, main activity get summary. So that's the first thing that happens. 
Um, and then I'll put um, this down here when the summary, whoop, I'll say uh, summary response. And then maybe for fun, I'll say uh, set summaries dot length, right? I'll, I'll have it uh, also display the number of summaries. All right, so let's put some logging in our uh, in our server. Now in the server, um, you know, uh, well, actually we can still use Android logging. Uh, that, that will work okay, so let's do that. So um, let's see, or do, 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 or start the server. Uh, where am I gonna put the logging? So let's put uh, some logging in here. We'll do log um, dot i network example. Uh, let's see request for um, and then I'm gonna and I need to put this a little bit lower here so I get the path right because that's something that we pull off the, the network object and then I will put some logging and get summary and and the goal here is really to understand um, what's happening right so I'm putting this in so that we can just trace the execution of the code and this can be really useful, right? In the sense that, you know, we, we want to understand what's happening. So I'll, I'll put that um, request, I'll get, let's see here. Uh, this is get summary, uh, I'll just leave that like that. Okay, so now let's stop the app, uh, let's rerun it, and we're gonna see what happens when it starts up. We'll trace this, this set of requests. So what should happen is the first thing is that the main activity runs. It makes the requests for the summaries from the client, using the client code. Um, the client then, oh, let's see, network example, there we go, okay. So the first thing that happens, let's, let's walk through this together. The first thing that happens is the onCreate method of main activity runs. That's what kicks off everything. It calls get summary. Get summary, now we're in the client. So now we're requesting the summaries and it shows me the URL. Like I said, this looks a lot like a web address that you might type into your web browser. That's what gets used to make the request. The next thing that happens, and we can ignore this, this is part of the startup process, but the next thing we see is request for summary 2021 spring. That's from the server. So now if I look at the server code, I'm in this dispatch method. So the dispatch method uses the uh, path to determine that it should call get summary. It calls get summary, and then actually let's put uh, let's put a, a method uh, let's put a message in here too, so we can see the whole thing, um, and then we'll say uh, summary return. We'll say um, get summary return forces dot length forces. Okay, so I'll stop this and I'll run it again, and now we're going to actually see the client request um, being uh, printed as well. Okay, so I'll run the app. Um, and so we're kind of showing you everything starts in the main activity. And so the question is, you know, why is the main activity asking for the list of courses? Because it wants to draw them on the screen, right? It wants to show them to the user. Um, okay, so the main activity calls get summary. Uh, this is in the client, we request the summaries. Now we see the server side code. It gets a request to the path. That path causes it to enter get summary. Then we see get summary returned to 73 courses. And then the final thing that happens is main activity, that callback gets called. Um, and this is actually what causes uh, the 73 courses to be uh, shown on the display. And if you actually scroll around here, what you'll find is that there are actually 73 different courses that are being rendered here. It's hard to count right now because you all you see the numbers, right? Um, but that's also that's how things work, right? So, and and on some level, again, let's go back to a high level view of things. The smartphone, right, is requesting information from the server when it starts up because it doesn't know what the numbers and the titles of the courses that it needs to show are. So it requests data from the server. The server sends the data back in JSON format. Um, that's deserialized on the client using Jackson, right? Our our favorite. Um, you know, JSON uh, library. And then that information is used by the main activity to render to display. So very similar process that you would take when you request a web page from your phone, when you request music, right? You ask the server, send me the audio data for this track, it does that, and then your uh, phone plays it through the speakers, right? 
a very similar process here. So this uh, pattern of requesting data from the server and then using that in the application is extremely common. Um, as we go forward, you're going to get experience with augmenting this, right? So we've given you one example of how to request data from the server. By the time you're done with the app, you know, in, in a few months, you'll have added uh, new requests in the client, and you'll also have added new routes on the server, allowing it to return different types of data. So very cool.